In the winter of 2014 to 15, Justin Litcher and Sean Forey became the first two people to complete the entire Pacific Crest Trail in the wintertime. These brave explorers spent four months battling the elements and surviving through intense winter conditions. Winter through hiking is no joke. Justin and Sean had to overcome many challenges while treading through dangerous backcountry. They were alone in the wilderness and without help or resupply stations for long stretches of the trail. On this episode of Adventure Dining Guide, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Justin to learn about the food that fueled he and Sean's legendary journey. Justin, what was one of your biggest challenges regarding food on this trip? Well, because of the winter, we'd have short days, the temperatures would be cold, we'd, we were trying to maximize our hours of travel, and if we took a break, we couldn't sit still long because it would get cold, so we'd have to keep moving. So the biggest challenges were to get enough calories in a short amount of time at each break. At night, a lot of times we'd have to melt snow for water, which could take a long time, so it's just figuring out efficient means to get our, to get our calories. We, our general routine would be, we'd wake up before dark, eat breakfast before dark, and pretty much get on the trail or start moving before uh, the light, so that as soon as we had some light, we were, we were moving. We would go about three to four hours, and then we'll take the break for 15, 20 minutes if we could. If, if, if it was a really nice day, maybe a little bit longer, but then yeah. uh, do another four hours, take a break. So all those breaks were revolved around eating. At the rate I could eat, it was hard to even get in how much I needed in that 15 minutes. Justin set up his mock kitchen here. This is a traditional setup that he was using on the Pacific Crest Trail. So he's going to run through some of his common things he would cook and his methods of preparing these things. Yeah, so this is the uh, Trail Designs Tie Tri Sidewinder uh, Caldera Cone Stove. Uh, it's basically, they make this pretty cool uh, stove out of a Pepsi can and then you use uh, uh, alcohol for the fuel. In this case, we were pretty much just using a uh, gas line antifreeze, which is methyl alcohol, and it burns clean. Um, we chose to use alcohol because it's a lot a lot simpler system. We're familiar with it, and with this setup, it's actually pretty efficient um, for melting snow and cooking, even in the winter. You might have to warm up the alcohol. You can do that by just holding like a little piece of paper or a square of toilet paper lit to it and then it, it'll act as a wick basically and then just light up. I see an array of delicious food back here. This is common things that you're eating on the trail. We basically kind of rotate, you know, Lara bars, Kind bars, that type of thing. And we probably eat close to 20 bars a day, um, every day. Yeah, and then we do jerky sometimes because that was pretty quick. Other things that were nice were these the Justin squeeze packets because um, they're already portioned and you could just tear it and ingest calories and we do um, crystal light packets a lot in our water so we could actually drink it if we let the water sit a lot of times it would freeze um, so we'd pretty much have to get the water and drink it some of the main dinners that i would do would be um, either angel hair pasta I, obviously i'd pre-package this into uh, ziploc bags and before dinner i'd start eating like a nut butter just for extra calories one of my favorites was the uh, chocolate hazelnut butter mashed potatoes Four cheese was one of my favorite flavors. Yeah, so these were two of the north sides that were my favorites, kind of staples. And with these, I'd cook them up, and then right before they were ready, I'd add a package of ramen. Since it's cheap, it's like 18 cents, and then it doubles the size of the meal. And the nice thing about this whole system, too, is these are things that you can generally find at grocery stores. So you're not looking for specialty items, and it's more affordable. Yeah, it's a lot more affordable. For a day of food, I would spend uh, probably 10 to $12 or so, 10 to $13, somewhere in there, depending on how remote the store is, mm -hmm. you know, and how expensive it is. But compared to $6 for one meal that over, over four and a half, five months, that makes a big difference. That adds up. Yeah. It's a very efficient and process. You can, and you can resupply easier from these remote locations. That's a wrap for today's episode of Adventure Dining Guide. Thank you so much for watching the series about eating civilized miles from civilization. For more information, you can check out the YouTube channel or AdventureDiningGuide.com. Thank you, Justin, for stopping in, sharing your experiences, and happy trails on your next journey. Thank you.